several Eastern Hemisphere countries. Most likely, while you were growing up in the Western culture, you must have had some wrong stereotype ideas about people living in Eastern countries. Yeah. And I'm sure people living in Eastern Hemisphere culture have got comparable wrong stereotype ideas about other Western culture. And these misunderstanding and wrong stereotype ideas are causing misunderstanding, hatred, conflict, leading to terrorism and retaliation by war, and the whole world's in fire, and the vicious circles going on and on. If you would like to identify some of the wrong stereotype ideas, you grew up with yourself, and other ideas you know about from friends, uh, other people about Eastern culture. And while you are living in Eastern culture, can you remember some significant wrong stereotype ideas mm. you can mention? I had the great good fortune to be to be raised by uh, people by parents who really were very broad-minded and cosmopolitan, just in their spirit and in their in who they were and are. Uh, my parents, especially my father, grew up in very modest circumstances in Dallas, Texas. His mother was a farmer's daughter. He was the first person in his family to be college educated. So we're, there's not a lot of you know great sort of intellectual or worldly experience kind of background and tradition in my family. But my very ordinary, uneducated grandparents instilled in my father uh, several important values. One is fairness, the importance of being fair and fair-minded towards all people. And in Texas in the 40s and 50s, that meant white people and black people primarily. But that's extrapolatable to, to the, the entire human community. And the other thing is, is a, a sense of the world is an interesting place. You know, the world doesn't end at the city limits of Dallas it, it end, or, or Chicago or, or the state line of Wisconsin when I was growing up. The world is a fascinating, various place. And, and uh, as I said last week to the, the executive director of the Republican Party of Waukesha County um, of Wisconsin, uh, who she was asking her advi my advice about whether she should take her teenagers overseas. And I said, basically, yeah, <laughs> you know, what a question, of course you should. Um, the world is much more interesting and less scary than we tend to think it is. In terms of my own person, my own family's background, my father, my grandfather, who was a tool and die machine operator guy in a factory in Dallas, in his two weeks vacation, he put out, he got in his old tiny car and put his two kids in the back seat and his wife in the passenger seat and drove um, all the way up to Canada and all the way down into farthest southern Mexico and over to San Francisco and New York City. This is a very modest, fam you know, lower middle class family. Um, just having that imagination, <clears throat> being able to live your life as if you are interested in other people. That's not something you can necessarily force other people to, to take as a priority, but you can live your life in terms of that example and hopefully some of it rubs off. And I can see that uh if the trend kept on going this way, we will have the indigenous uh, uh, American, uh, they will be doing a much better uh, job than what we expect from ourselves, at least our generation. But my question uh, is going to be, you said that there is a time for a movement. Can you at least, uh, I know that you, 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 can you give us some sketch that you have in your mind uh, about that movement so we can benefit from that rather than we telling you what uh, we we think that, that I'm scrolling down in this article I want to bring your attention to the other article that I pulled up a few minutes ago but um, uh, here's here's a quote that I pulled out of another article in, in my article Muslims in America uh, time for movement question mark uh, these two writers writing in the New York Review of Books, historian of the Roman Catholic experience in America, said, Must Muslims unequivocally re reject all forms of terrorism, especially those Muslims who want to promote full Muslim participation in American society? Of course, that goes without saying. But if the Catholic experience in the United States holds any lesson, it is that becoming American 
also means asserting one's constitutional rights fully and forcefully, even if that assertion is occasionally taken to be insulting, even if other communities are, are going to be bothered by your assertion of your rights. That assertion is an important political act, uh, I think is what these writers are saying. I think the same thing is, can easily be said about the, the civil rights movement for uh, in the black community in this country. Um, another figure who is, I think, important that I didn't mention, we all talk about Martin Luther King, but of course Malcolm X is at least equally important. And one of Malcolm, and Malcolm, as, as you know, was a Muslim. Uh, he, one of his complaints about King was that King was too timid and too conciliatory. And <clears throat> Malcolm was more a more complicated figure than just this angry black man who's the stereotype of, of you know, that many people think of him as having been, but, um, but something he knew was that you have to get in people's face if you're going to get any attention and respect. And, um, but of course the problem for his, for, for that movement, and potentially for the movement that we're um, perhaps hoping for, is that leaders who do put themselves out in the front lines and who are assertive and vocal um, often meet the same kind of end that both Malcolm and, and Martin Luther King did. And um, that's a problem. That's potentially a problem. And I think a real one. Uh, I do know that I could do my part to, to get to be, uh, to be a little more um, perhaps specific in response to your question. I think it's helpful to have friends of the Muslim community who are not Muslims being assertive as I'm trying to be. Uh, but there needs to be perhaps a, um, somehow organically from within the Muslim communities in America, leadership needs to emerge that will be, um, that will be able to claim the attention of the wider American public in a way. Thank you very much. So, you would like to refer to care or love for Muslims, whether they are Pakistan or United States. I've been in this country for 45 years. I came in 1967 after the Six Day War in the Arab Southern. Well, anyway, I think we have to <coughs> blame ourselves. We have our share of not really mingling and mixing you know, the, in American society. In many years, religious, political, Linguistic, cultural, we, we have, you know. Also, <clears throat> in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, we imported all kind of leaders, religious leaders from all over the Muslim world. So that kind of ideas, anti idea, anti idea of the self righteous idea. And they were preaching, talking in the mosque, and people somehow received like they came. Some groups, I don't want any, many groups, and said, you know, we should not mix in the American political system. It's Nizam Kuf. Mm. You know, mm. so yeah. Muslims shy away from that. See, that's Nizam Kuf, you know, they are careful, they are not yeah, yeah. and they have to say, oh, that's really the, then we have to the one time. There are so many aspects which keep us after the turning point came after September 11, 2000, and then. Muslims came to their senses. Yes, we are part of this country. Also, when you said, can a Muslim be an American? Yes, he must be an American. Any citizen, any Muslim will become a citizen. There's a contract between the man in the United States. And he had to fulfill that, you know, to defend the country and be part of the country and to work for the welfare of the country. It's a religious obligation that to fulfill that contract. A woman who raised your hand and swear allegiance to the United States, you must be part of the country. Regardless, but now I think the thing changes. The turning around, the turning around. We have second generation yeah. who feel they are Americans. Like my son and I tell him to go back home to Palestine. He said, No, my home is here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm American, I'm born here, I have house here. He's American. Yeah. He stand up in the football game to read the. the you know, the national anthem and the flag, whatever, I don't, because it's not <laughs> part of my 
the cuts are going through. So actually, we have to we have our share of the blame of not really being part of the fabric of the American society. Hopefully, that will change for the new Thank you, sir. And you can represent our uh, situation um, in a sense that yes, we. You, one of the question you said now is very hard to make that type of law that uh, no this type of thing could, should be in that type of insult should be in the done to any, any and it's very hard. But if you really look at that, is, isn't that will make you a double standard or some type of because of the Muslim, uh, though that we are over 52 or 53 countries uh, that are Muslim, but because of the, we are weak politically, uh, when you are weak, definitely the stronger culture dominates you. And, but my question is that do you get a chance and how your audience feel if you will tell them, look, yes, I understand that is happening, but look what happened to WikiLeaks, how the freedom of press was suppressed. Oh, look at this, uh, Harry B. I mean, um, that uh, uh, the prince in, in, in this, uh, Harry. Kate, Kate Middleton. The pictures, what? Kate, Kate. the pictures of Kate yeah, Middleton. Uh, Kate, Kate's pictures. Mm -hmm. I was so amazed that they said that the reason they censor all those pictures in all different countries, they said that would be not honorable to the Queen's family. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Here goes all your uh, uh, freedoms and all those things yeah. for the honor of queen and when she's <laughs> lying naked and, and you have the liberty or you have the freedom and you express that freedom yeah. and you want to be champion of that freedom to insult some or billion and a half people yeah. who not only respect the Prophet Muhammad but respect all the prophets. Yeah. In 1980s, uh, somewhere, they made a movie about Jesus, peace be upon him, the Jesus superstar or whatever, they made him, God forbid, the lost temptation attempt, or, uh, some very bad mm -hmm. name they gave him. And we were the first Muslim who protested against that movie. And the Christian came after eight hours. So, so, yeah. so we respect that. But unfortunately, uh, I agree with you that our leadership is very weak. We do not have that type of leadership that can go in the uh, a circle and in the public arena and make a very strong point. That is, and if you get a chance, I think you you should uh, um, talk on those lines and give a people that idea that you know, very explicitly from a religious point of view, and so do similarly, so do. Pra serious practicing Christians and Jews, but there are many people in wider American society who are very secular, and they they really don't respect any any religious tradition. So, when it comes to um, and they also don't respect the Queen of England necessarily either. I think those same people would like to see those pictures of Kate Middleton, you know. But um, so there is not respect for for uh, they they don't get why the prophet should be especially respected. They, and if you argue that it's because he's a religious leader, the founder of your religion, they won't get that. I'm just sort of telling you, I mean, you know this, I think, already. That's part of the problem. To make the argument, as you just did, that you know we're the first ones to defend um, Jesus, peace be upon him, before even the Christians did, that's an excellent point. It just doesn't compute to secular people who don't respect religion at all. They, they won't appreciate that point. Yeah. Thank you very much. Please, let's all give a warm applause. Thank you. I want to say thank you um, for coming out here. And uh, we have this little gift for Oh, wonderful. You. Oh, beautiful. Um, thank you. It's an original Ebru work of art. Ebru is a Turkish form of watermark.